could go either way. The other issue that's mainly important are two. Um, a lot of scouts have favorable um, economic relationships with governments uh, and churches and others. Government entities that give favorable treatment, for instance, the, the ACLU of San Diego just has filed suit in August uh, to stop the local government from giving sweetheart deals to the Boy Scouts that in effect subsidize their existence, saying that while uh, the Boy Scouts are entitled to equal rights, they're not entitled to special rights, kind of twisting that phrase on, on back at them. But the other issue is uh, equal access. And actually the ACLU has, has talked about this internally and we're, we're actually very concerned if uh, a school district were to say that we're not going to allow the Boy Scouts to use our facilities because they exclude homosexuals from uh, gay scout ma from scoutmasters. Uh, that has been decided by the Supreme Court as being expressly protected by the First Amendment and we would be very troubled at the notion that uh, someone could be excluded from a government access to a facility on the basis of a constitutionally protected expression. Uh, so it's, it's really coming down to, at this point, uh, there are private organizations, churches, other groups that have subsidized the, uh, the Boy Scouts for years. That are, Some of them are reconsidering that. Some of them have quit subsidizing the Boy Scouts based upon this because you have no obligation to give funding or to give support to an organization that's, that's discriminating uh, but you do have to grant them equal access if indeed it is, is a constitutionally protected right that, they're, that you're trying to justify that exclusion on. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the next few years with the Boy Scouts because at least locally there has been no severing that I'm familiar with. Uh, Plymouth Church in Des Moines has uh, sponsored a troop for 50 years and they don't have any plans to change that. And uh, the United Way has also not withheld funding from the, uh, the Boy Scouts, which of course United Way is a private organization, they can do as they choose on that. But uh, it'll be very interesting to see if there is a kind of chilling out of the Boy Scouts by uh, government entities and, and private groups in terms of supporting them based upon this. And I think it is evidence of the unsure and rather uh, shaky feeling that the Boy Scouts have and that they're not here. Even people within the Boy Scouts that don't like the policy refuse to come and the people within the Boy Scouts that wanted to uphold the policy that the National Boy Scouts have put forth through Dale, they didn't want to come either. They're laying low, they're hiding in their caves, they don't want to be seen, they don't want to talk about this, they're hoping that people just forget about it, and then you just keep on going, and we're interested to see what society does. What's interesting, although I, I have only anecdotal evidence to support this, is that the, girls, uh, the Boy Scouts, excuse me, ha at least in some jurisdictions, have, have started a kind of don't ask, don't tell policy with leaders because they are they're eager to get leaders, they want leaders that they believe to be valid leaders um, and um, are not pursuing a policy of making inquiry. So if you don't walk in and say, hey, by the way, I'm gay, uh, they're going, well, I'm sure you're just supportive of this activity. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I did this because I got a signal that it was not being held. Um, I, this gentleman, I think, was, was asking some very fundamental questions about, um, in essence, can you, can you teach honesty, can you teach morality, can you teach patriotism if you are gay? Um, and, and if you are a gay man, a gay scout leader, and a scout approaches you and says, uh, I'm thinking about engaging in interracial dating, or perhaps I'm unsure about my sexual orientation. Uh, how could a scout leader respond to that? And that was uh, Jeremy's response was, well, the scouting policies would tell you, look, look elsewhere. That's not what scouting talks about. Go to your parents, go to your church, go to your counselor for leadership. Is that a, a fair but brief summary of your question, sir? In, in, in essence, what I was asking. How would he respond to the youths that came to him asking for guidance? Sure. Yeah, when you're sitting around the campfire talking at a social event, you're at a Boy Scout jamboree, you aren't always talking about making the line where the rabbit comes out of the hole and runs around the tree and goes back in, or making your square knot, or talking about trailblazing. Certainly at some points in time you're going to be talking about how to live life, and when those issues arise, and I think Jeremy uh, 
answered, and let me put words in your mouth, that you would follow what you were told, what you were taught as a scout leader. Yes. That's the same uh, question in the back. They started asking. I know. Who's, I know. I know places asking? where they aren't, and I know places. Uh, yeah. Who's asking? It's local control, so some obviously do. Yeah. I'm very familiar with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Their goal is to legalize uh, lowering the consent age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess my response to that, sir, is that there are heterosexuals that are serial killers. Does that mean that all heterosexuals are therefore to be feared? No, it doesn't. The literature, the empirical evidence is totally rejects that. That it is a matter of power. It's a very complex issue, but believe me, sir, the evidence of scientists in this country and around the world have clearly stated and have clearly found that pedophiles and homosexuality is not the same thing. And it is simply not true. The evidence is not there. The reason that people continue to believe that homosexuality is about pedophiles is because of a lack of understanding of the complexity of the issue. I mean, that doesn't mean that you don't have the right to exercise your, your decision-making power as a parent, but to try and claim that because NAMBLA exists, the, the people in the gay rights community can't stand NAMBLA, they hate them, because here are these deviants who are attempting to you know, promote the idea that, that young boys can consent to sex, really make them look bad. And they don't like it. They don't advocate that. They don't believe in that. And they keep getting tarred with that because people don't understand that it is not the same thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. In the, in, the, in the spirit of open decision, decision making and shared governance and free speech, a lot of times we just get too enthusiastic here. Now, um, let me say, you were saying that you, you did feel the need to make decisions for your son. Um, does that include scouting? And um, did you talk to each of the scout masters or did you interview the scout masters? Would you recommend that as uh, a, a goal for, for all parents? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I, one of the things that has become fascinating, again, from my perspective of the Girl Scouts, um, it is interesting to me that one of the things that has been very tough is to get a lot of parental involvement. As somebody who, who supports scout leadership and is a qualified scout leader, I'd be delighted to have parents like you. Um, who, who cared enough about their child to actually know the person, be introduced to the person, um, no matter what your decision-making power, you care enough about your kid to show up and, and actively make an, inter make an inquiry of, to interview, to question the person who's going to be taking your, in my case, your daughter on a weekend trip. Um, I have been stunned. I've had girls in my troop as long as three years, and I've never met their parents. Their parents never come to a parental activity. Their parents are always too busy. So um, I salute you. Other questions before we bring this to a close? One more.
And on that, uh, on that note, I'm going to, uh, first of all, close by thanking our panelists. We are grateful for your time and for your willingness to be here. And second, I would remind you, I, I would again state, just so if we have any people who came in late, we did indeed ask both the Boy Scouts and the United Way to be here, both declined to be here. Next to the last, Tom Vilsack will be here in the Campanile Room at 3.30. Please be here if you can. And finally, just remember the next President of the United States is likely to make several Supreme Court appointments. Think about your conscience. Vote next Tuesday. Thanks a lot. <laughs>